Hi guys and welcome to the review of the MC Cases Phantom 4 hard carry case. Now this is a case that I picked up from Amazon very recently. Uh, it cost £160 so this is by no means a cheap case. Um, and basically the purpose of this review is I'm going to take a look at it in detail as always. Um, you know talk about the pros and cons, we're going to look at measurements, we're going to look at weights, we're going to look at fitment, you know things that are good about it, things that are bad about it. Um, and really whether or not it's worth the £160 investment um, in terms of uh, owning it for your Phantom 4. So with that said, let's first just take a look at the outside. Obviously, as you can see, it's very rugged design, um, fairly common kind of design, very similar to a Peli case or something like that. You've got these ridge works here, which is quite nice because what they're designed to do is they're supposed to distribute weight across them so if you stack something on top of it let's say you checked it in at an airline um, then basically if someone shoves something on top of it then it would distribute the weight of that thing on top of it rather than actually pushing down on the center section which is you know a nice feature but kind of expected um, in terms of the uh, the locking mechanisms as you can see here and i'm sorry i can't get the whole thing in shot they're so big but it's a two-stage lock so to to lock it you first catch the first top bit and then you push in for the bottom bit and there's four of those so you've got the two front ones and you've got the ones on the side as well now that's extra security and the reason for that is that this is designed to be in fact waterproof completely waterproof they say that you can uh, submerge this in one meter of water for 30 minutes um, and it will actually stay bone dry now I'm not necessarily going to test that especially with the Phantom 4 in it but that's you know a, a nice appealing feature if you're maybe taking it on a boat or something like that if there was any risk of there getting water in it and obviously most importantly if it's raining then you know you know you're not going to get water ingress or anything like that which you can do on some of the cheaper cases um, only other things to mention on the outside it does have an auto pressure um, popper so um, if you did put it on a, uh, a plane and the pressure got too high inside it would pop out release the air um, and you've also got at least two or three places where you can put uh, locks so there are little holes here um, that you can put padlocks in to keep it nice and secure if you take it away so other than that not much to say um, the handle does fold all the way round which is something that sometimes on some of the cheaper cases I've had it doesn't do so it will only go there or there it won't go all the way down so it's quite nice that you do have that but um, that's really all you can say about the um, about the externals of the case so let's pop it open now I have filled this up with equipment and there we go as you can see there is the phantom 4 sitting in there with various bits of accessories so what i'm going to do i'll talk about it very quickly but then i'm going to take the camera into hand and i can sort of zoom in and show you a bit more detail of the fitment and the placement of various items what you can expect from it what you can fit inside there basically but as you can see from the basics we've got the phantom 4 with a battery on it we've got one two extra batteries you can see there's an extra space for another one here and again i'll talk about that later transmitter fits in there and it's already got its um its ipad and iphone attachment on it so that can stay there uh, a couple of cables and the charger is in the back of it so everything that you would expect from it nice and neatly placed you've got a slot in the front here and again i'm going to go into more detail about this this is for your tablet um, ipad or otherwise um, so i'll show you uh, fitment in regards to what sort of sizes you can get in there and also so there's a compartment under here that we'll talk about when I get the camera in hand that um, that you can see what's inside there, what you can fit inside there. Likewise, at the end of this, I'm going to talk more about it um, in terms of the sizes. I'm going to talk about the weight, as I've said, um, and I'm going to look at the dimensions in terms of can you check this on various airlines or would you actually have to, um, you know, put it in the hold all and actually check it through there or can you use it as hand, uh, hand luggage? So um, I'll look at some detail there. But for the moment now, I'm just going to stop uh, talking and I'm going to grab the camera and we'll take a closer look at everything. Okay, so first of all, let's apologise for the shaky cam mode. Uh, hopefully this won't be uh, too bad and give you all seasickness. But anyway, let's just take a look at the uh, the details here. So you can see that this is a good, high-quality laser-cut foam here. Uh, it's nothing like that pick-and-pluck foam that you get on some cases, certainly the ones that I've owned before. But if you just look at the edges, you know, you can see the fitment around all of the edges are really nice. Um, I'm going to lift the Phantom up and I'll show you uh, what's behind it as well. But you can see the fitment is really really good on everywhere um, you know and as you would expect 160 pounds is a lot of money for a case like this uh, especially for an item that's come out fairly recently um, but what's really nice about it I think is you know they've, they've taken consideration in not um, you know not suspending things so it will make your foam droop so for example if we just take this out um, and zoom in there 
you can see there is a base to this so it's not just a hollow underneath there it's not a case of the um, the battery goes in and is suspended by these these outer ridges it is literally a case of when you slide this in you can feel it sliding in and you can feel it touching the bottom um, which means there's a nice you know suspended thing there's no wiggle at all in any of it there's no flexibility you you know if I was to try and lift that out you have to really use a bit of resistance to pull um, which proves that there's not going to be load shift it's not going to be moving around um, in terms of the battery storage like I say you've got one two three on the front here obviously you can keep a fourth in your phantom um, and then there's also two slots which I'll show you underneath this panel um, you've got the charger space there as you can see and you've got I'm not entirely sure what this is for I'd have to look up on the manual but um, another slot there there's in fact a little groove here that's designed for SD card storage which is quite nice so it's sort of pinched between there um, in terms of fitment everything is fitting absolutely perfect in there um, the only thing where I've noticed is if I lift the transmitter up ever so slightly you can see there's a slight indentation there and that's something uh, one of the things that I guess maybe concerns me a little bit because when I do uh, this I'll, I'll zoom it down and again sorry for the shakiness but if we look at the profile the thing that stands out to me is everything is you know nice and low on the case but the thing that stands up most is in fact these antennas and these points here now my worry with that is that if someone put a big heavy something on the top of this yes there is some foam but as you can see it's not exactly what I would call deep foam but it is foam nonetheless now the encouraging thing about this because I was worried that that this, uh, this indentation was being caused by pressure placed on this joint here. That's not going to be a good thing. But the good news is, as far as I can see, when I look at this corrugated foam, if this is pushed down for a long time um, because there's weight on it, it would normally make an indentation. Likewise, if the tops of the motors were pressing or anything like that. And when I shut the case down, it's very difficult to tell, but I think there is enough room for that so it's not actually touching on this. But I might just put a bit of chalk or something on there just to just to test that out uh, at a later date, just to see if that is a case, because that is a, a weak spot on the antenna and it's certainly something you wouldn't want to uh, have happening if you were, say, checking it in with an airline. That would be, um, you know, a lot of pressure is going to be put on the top of this case and it's going to get thrown around. So something worth just bearing in mind in that respect. So let's just take a look inside this panel now as well. So as you can see, nice laser etched little phantom here. This is actually the handle. Pops out of there and then you've got this kind of cavernous area where you can put stuff. I've got the three ND filters that I'm going to be doing tests of uh, over the next month. Um, and you've also got a couple of the cables that I haven't bothered putting anywhere else. Um, and then I've got the spare props, but you can also see in the base here there are two further slots for two more batteries so this case can carry six batteries including one in the phantom without problem also if you don't intend to have six batteries so for example i don't actually own you know more than three batteries you can in fact lift this whole segment out a nice tight fit which is good but that just gives you an increased depth and you can see the depth on that is actually quite significant so that just gives you a little bit more storage room for all your bits and bobs which is always going to be a very nice thing just going to slide that back in and again fitment of this top lid is really nice you can tell it's going to stay in place and keep things nice and secure so that's basically the insides of it and there's not much to talk about more than that other than things like the ipad um, and also you know the way the phantom is actually held and how secure it is so let's tackle the phantom now what i really like about this is if i just lift the phantom out you can see behind it that again it's not hollow you're not relying on the legs of the phantom to support all the weight here underneath where the arms go there are these grooves there are these indentations and when you put it down you can feel that it's evenly distributing the weight across the arms and the legs you've got these little cutouts here which means that you can only fit the phantom one way around because that's where your gimbal lock is supposed to go in which is again very nice and underneath the phantom you can see there's more soft foam just to give a bit of padding to your gimbal whilst it's in transit. So if something, you know, if it got turned upside down and weight was put down on it, hopefully it's not going to cause any damage to your camera or your gimbal. So very well thought out, you know, uh, as you would expect, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's very well thought out and I'm saying it's very good. But then again, £160, I would expect it to be good. So um, I think with that said, the only other thing to look at is the tablet slot. Now the reason this intrigued me is because I own an iPad Air 1, a uh, 9.7 inch one, so not a mini. Obviously a mini is going to fit in there absolutely fine. 
But one thing that I found a bit of a, a worry, I guess, was if you've got an iPad, a lot of people like to keep an iPad in a case. And indeed, I have a very tatty and worn now iPad with a case, but you can see scuff marks all over it, and I've got like a gel coat on the back of it. And what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to have to live with the fact of having to remove all of this to either carry it around or use it on my, iP uh, on my Phantom 4. The good news is my iPad fits in the holder for the Phantom 4 with all of this still on, so I don't have to remove that. I pop the, pop the magnetic case off the front of it, but in terms of storage here, if I give it a wiggle and a real push, you can see that all goes in there nice and snug and it leaves a bit of a gap there. And again, I've got some photos measuring some of this so you can see the, the gaps just in case your tablet isn't an iPad. But if your tablet is thicker than, you know, much thicker than iPad Air 1, then that is going to be a pretty big squeeze, especially if you've got a case. So bear that in mind just in case uh, that, that was an issue. But if it's pushed down, again, let's just go into this sort of profile mode like that it doesn't stick up too far certainly no further than any of the other equipment so a 9.7 inch tablet fits snugly without risk of any uh, any worries of damage or anything like that and again it's really not going to move out of there so the final thing to look at which is something that i think a lot of people will find quite important is the other feature of this case which is quite nice in terms of getting up and running quickly is that actually you can fit your props on I'll do all four of them. Like that. So we've got all four props are now on. You can see there is no resistance, not banging into anything. It's not hitting the battery, anything like that. Obviously it will hit the iPad, but what I can now do is with all of that done, I can shut the case fully and there is no there is no impact of those props so you can literally have your phantom in your case with props on and then obviously you can have some uh, you can have some spare props inside there as well but it just means that you can get things up and running nice and quickly you know obviously you've got to do other things to get a phantom up in the air but it's it's just one of those things that means you can just lift it straight out and boom put it on top the other thing to bear in mind with a case like this is of course you've got a nice flat surface so if you're out in some rugged ground it gives you a platform to be able to fly off and i think that is something that is worth considering because it is something you know if you're in long grass anything like that if you're on rough terrain um, imu sensor calibrations and stuff like that it's always a good idea to have a bit of a flat surface so that's uh, that's that's another worthy thing uh, worthy thing to to note on that and just whilst i'm here the only other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to lift up this and you can see that the original phantom carry case is significantly smaller has to be said the depth here and again photos will show this is almost identical to the depth of this case but the actual footprint if we go to the back here it is significantly smaller um, and when you get onto the weights you'll see the difference in the weight which is quite interesting actually um, when, you, when you see that between this and that so um, that's kind of the shaky overview uh, apologies for it being a bit shaky and now we'll move on to look at some photos and uh, draw some conclusions on this case so just before we go into those conclusions, I wanted to talk a little bit about the dimensions and the weight of this case. Now, in specific, what I was thinking was people who are looking at this review, yes, they're going to be looking for something that's of a premium product and a premium price. Now, why would they be doing that? Number one, they're trying to protect their investment, which is absolutely completely understandable. But it may also be that they're looking to go a little bit further than just local hobbying with their Phantom, and they want something that's really going to, you know, stand up to the test of travel. Now, with that in mind what I've done on the left hand side you can see top left there are the dimensions from MC cases and this is the actual case dimensions themselves I've checked this with a tape measure and I can confirm they are accurate on the right hand side you can see that what I've got from a website is just a cross section of some of the larger European airlines um, and their maximum dimensions for hand luggage on international flights. Now what I found quite interesting when I did this was every single little uh, section that's underlined in red, that's where I've underlined it because basically the dimensions of the case itself are too big for these airlines. Now you can see some of them don't exceed them by much. So for example, the height of 40 centimeters and the fact that the case is 42.8 
chances are you'd probably get away with it. But there are other airlines where, you know, they've got 35 centimetres, so you're exceeding it by almost 10 centimetres. Now, that could potentially be an issue. And from my experience of doing international travel with large cases for, uh, for hand luggage, what tends to be um, the situation is they will say, either they'll just let you get on, they won't even question it, or they'll say, we believe that's too big, can you try and fit it into one of these test cages? And if you can fit it into the test cage, then they'll let you on. If you can't, then you'll have to check your bag and you'll have to pay for the checking. You'll also have to um, make sure, obviously, that you've got all of the equipment inside it really secure because it's potentially going to get beaten about. But you've also got to consider the lithium rule. Um, now, that's another subject altogether, but we'll just take in BA, for example. Um, if you were to take a Phantom and check your Phantom into the checked holdall, you would only be able to put the Phantom in the case with a battery inside the Phantom. You are not allowed to take spares. They will only allow you the piece of equipment with the equi with the battery actually installed into it. That would mean you'd have to take the other batteries out and potentially put them in your hand luggage and again you have to double check with the airline as to what you can carry. The Phantom 4 has 82.4 I believe uh, watt hour batteries and for example again with BA they will allow 160 watt hours of battery to be carried but usually when you're carrying it in hand luggage they expect it to be in some equipment so just carrying two lipos with you may be questionable and they also request that you get prior approval to doing it so anyone who's thinking of doing this if you didn't know this already please 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 check with an airline if you're traveling with a phantom and these lipos otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to get there you'll put they'll put it through the scanner and i've had this happen to myself before in china they will see the lithium in the scan they will then pull you into the security zone at which point they will then say you've got to take all of these out now they'll either say bin it and again in china that was literally a case they said you're going to have to bin those batteries we will not let you travel with them um, or they're going to say put them in your hand luggage fortunately on my situation it was not batteries that i was going to be particularly uh, fussed about losing but if they ask you to do that on 130 quid's worth of phantom battery you're going to want to kick up a fuss and sometimes that's not a very good thing to do in an airport so again it's just something that i wanted to touch on so just be a bit wary of the dimensions in that and if there is any question of it then it may be a case of your you've got to really consider which option you go for maybe you're better off looking at a um, you know one of the dji products for the backpack system that's coming out very soon if not already um, likewise mc cases they actually do a similar inlay to this but inside a backpack um, which will be a little bit smaller but potentially will be a better option for taking as hand luggage so just bear that in mind. Now with all that said, the other thing in terms of the weight of the case, mostly on the airlines you can see it's probably within tolerance, but what I found quite interesting um, is that this case on its own, as you can see from this photo, it weighs 4.4 kilos with nothing in it whatsoever. That is literally just the case with its inlay. And that was quite a lot. I mean, that surprised me because when I then did a further test, I put all of my equipment, into the standard normal polystyrene phantom case that comes with it and as you can see in this photo here this is everything that i've got in there so all of the bits that i've got in the mc cases is in this phantom case the only thing that isn't in there is the ipad and when i weighed it as you can see from this picture it came in at about 4.5 kilos so it's almost the same weight as the empty mc cases on its own by carrying the entire load of equipment. So it was quite an eye opener that to me because if you were thinking of, you know, taking this case out in your car and then trekking across a couple of fields so you could get to that ideal location, your shoulder is gonna be hurting by the time you get there. Um, and it's certainly something that I'm gonna be considering in the future when I'm looking at other products because, you know, you don't really wanna be weighed down like that. And for the fact of the matter, you can carry three batteries in the standard polystyrene case while it isn't as rugged as this thing by any means for just lightweight carrying around it's actually almost as good an option except for the fact you've got to carry your ipad separately so again these are all bits of detail that i thought were worthy of putting into this review because that hopefully will cover a few questions that other people have got before they go out and buy this so with all that said let's move on to those photos we can take a deeper look at the photos and i'll just lead to a few conclusions 
So in my mind, without question, this is definitely worth £160. Its quality is second to none. The laser cut material, the fitment, the finish of everything is really, really good. Once you slot your Phantom 4 and all of the associated accessories into their places, you know once you close that lid that they are protected, that you could throw this thing around all you like and it's just not going to do any damage to your precious equipment inside it. That being said, the fact that it's so solid and so rugged is a bit of a downside in my mind as well. I personally like to get out into the middle of nowhere, remote locations, nice places across fields, and this is a very heavy case to carry for that reason. So if you're a person who does do that, you might want to prefer to look at a uh, uh, maybe a backpack option, maybe the DJI one, Manfrotto, again, MC cases do one as well. You're going to sacrifice that overall solidity and that rigidity, but you're going to have much more portability for it. However, of course, if you do want something, if you're a professional and you just want something that's going to hold everything nice and solid, this is definitely, definitely the case to go for. I genuinely don't think there's going to be any other case that comes out in the market that's going to do much more than this at all. It carries all the equipment that you want. It carries loads of batteries. It's got loads of space for extras. And I really do think that you're going to be very, very happy with your investment if you pay the money. I just think that you may end up having this and a backpack solution for the option of going out and about or maybe getting on that airline and using it as hand luggage. All in all though, very happy with it, very good case.